Okay. I think um, we'll get started. So hello everyone, my name is Tal Keston and I am the Network Manager for the Sustainable Development Solutions Network, Australia, New Zealand Pacific Regional Network. Um, I'm based at the Monash Sustainable Development Institute in Melbourne, Australia. And I'd like to welcome you all for joining us today. It's my pleasure and privilege to be your MC for today. I'd like to start by acknowledging the people of the Kulin Nations on whose lands I'm coming to you from today, um, as well as the Indigenous custodians of all the lands on which um, everyone here is coming from today. And I think there's a really big diversity of people coming from all over the world. So please do um, share where you're coming from, just so we have an idea of, of who's out there. Um, and I'd like to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. So why are we here today? Well, um, SGSN Australia New Zealand Pacific has for many years now been focused on the role of universities in achieving the SDGs, particularly because we really believe that universities are essential societal partners for achieving the SDGs that we can't really achieve the SDGs without the research, without the teaching, without the leaderships that universities provide. And we tried to capture some of that in a guide we presented a few years ago called Getting Started with the SDGs in Universities. And I think some of you might be familiar with that. Um, one of the things that really emerged strongly in the guide was how important it is um, as part of this process is for universities to um, find ways to report around how they're contributing to the SDGs. But I have to admit that back then, this was in 2017, there was very little happening in this area and not a lot of um, guidance around it. And I think SDG reporting in general was pretty much in very early form at the time, not just for universities, but in general. So it's been really amazing to see since then an explosion really of initiatives um, around university reporting on SDGs, both the development of frameworks, specific frameworks for reporting and rankings, as well as a lot of universities developing their own reports around the SDGs including things like SDG reports, sustainable development reports, and voluntary universities re reviews. So it's really amazing to see this, but a lot of these are happening independently and they do tend to have developed quite different approaches. So universities can um, contribute to the SDGs in lots of different ways. And um, these initiatives have all taken quite different approaches to how to report and what to report on. So to help make sense of all that is happening, which can be quite confusing for people who are starting, but even for people who are interested in how to um, increase the role of universities and to engage universities better, it's, it's been quite confusing to see all these different things. And so to help us make sense of it all, I'm really thrilled to have some of the people who have thought about this the most deeply in the world, I think, um, by developing these reports for their own universities. And I'd like to introduce them. They are Brian Skirm, who's the Head of Social Inclusion at the University of Manchester. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to look at my notes for that, <laughs> just to make sure I get all your titles correct. Um, it's Renzo Mori, who is the Sustainable Development Senior Advisor at RMIT University. Um, Professor Angelo Paletta, who is the Head of the Department of Management and Pro-Rector of the University of Bologna for Budget Strategic Planning and Process Innovation. And uh, Dr. Brian Chickson, who is the Advisor to the Executive on Special Projects at the University of Pretoria. 
who um, are some of the, um, I guess, kind of trailblazers and early adopters around university SDG reports and have really amazing experience, both in terms of how you do it, but also a lot of thinking around what needs to be done and how it works. So I'm really thrilled to have them um, with us today. And the way the session will work is we'll get each of them to give a very short five minute presentation, note to speakers, um, around just introducing us to the report that they've done and particularly the why they did it, what they did and how they did it. And then we will have a lot of time for discussion around different themes around reporting. So um, we will ask you a bit later around your interests in what are your main interests around the discussion, but also feel free to post your questions in the Q&A, not the, in the Q&A, so that will help us uh, keep track of what's been asked. Um, and at the same time, we really are keen to hear from you about your experiences and your thoughts. And you can use the chat for that. So that would be, um, yeah, as, as we go, feel free to post information and, and your thoughts in the chat. So um, I think this is all I need to say to get started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to invite, oh, one more thing though. Um, I really do want to thank and acknowledge um, a few other organisations and partners that have been part of the conversation with SDSN Australia New Zealand Pacific around this for quite a few years. In particular, the Australasian Campuses Towards Sustainability or ACTS that have done a lot of work with us on this, um, as well as SDSN Canada, SDSN Northern Europe, SDSN USA, SDSN Mediterranean, SDSN Italia and the SDSN Secretariat and apologies if I've forgotten anyone else. But this is a topic that's really of interest I think to a lot of people in a lot of different places and it's um, great to finally have um, bring the key people around this together. So I'd like to pass on the baton to Renzo who will get us started. Thank you very much. Thank you Tao. Uh, let me just share my screen. Can you all see my screen? Is it working? Cool. So thank you, thank you very much, Tao, for, for the introduction. It's, it's my pleasure to be here uh, representing IMIT and uh, be able to share with uh, everyone here uh, IMIT's experience in sustainability reporting. So uh, I think just to provide some background at RMIT, we are using the SGs as our sustainability framework for transformational change. So there is a big project happening across university and when I'm talking cross university, I'm talking about research, curriculum, and operations and governance. But in my talk today, I'll try to focus only on one component of this big project, which is the SDGs reporting. So it's not with the motivations. I think the, 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 the first one, you, you can see the five motivations here. But the first one is about commitments. So we have internal and external commitments to be accountable about work, our SDGs work. So the first one uh, we have uh, in 2019, we have the SDGs action plan approved by the VC. And as part of this big project, we have some specific topics that you can see here. One of them is that we embed in SDGs as part of our strategy. And the second one, this is specifically, you can see the text is a copy and paste from the action plan, which says that we aim to be accountable about our contributions to the SDGs. So to deliver, we have to have the, the SDGs reporting. So we, ha we have a public commitment with the SGSN network here in, in Australia. Uh, we did that in 2017 with a couple of universities. And among uh, the commitments we have, there is one specifically saying that we have to be accountable about our contributions to the SG. Uh, another uh, couple of reasons here, it's uh, our stakeholders delivered on our stakeholders. More and more we have people asking about the work we're doing on the SDGs, uh, foster collaboration, as, as a, a big institution, we have lots of silos and the SDGs report has been a very useful tool 
to engage and link the dots, both internally and externally. Uh, we want to positive influence sustainability reporting practice. And uh, sustainability reporting is, is already part of our DNA. Uh, we have been reporting, for example, on, on we have a sustainability report since 20, uh, 2015. And when we're talking about the SDGs, I think there are three main communication channels that you can see here in this slide. So the first one is the compliance, is a compliance requirement, it's our annual financial report. And if you see that annual report, we address sustainability and SDGs as more as a strategic direction. This is a high level uh, discussion about the, the use of the SDGs and sustainability in the, in the business strategy. The second one is the sustainability uh, report itself. So we started in 2015. We have been following since our first report, the GRI. And some of the aspects that I think it's relevant to this discussion is, we have been running, a, I think people familiar with the GRI know that we have to run materiality tests. So we have been incorporating SDGs as part of this materiality test. Uh, in, since 2017, when we became officially signatories of the SDGs agenda, we started embedding SDGs as part of our sustainability report. So there are a couple of issues uh, that we have been incorporating. Uh, in addition to the materiality test, we have what we call direct and indirect SDGs contributions. Uh, we have a link with the GRI indicators and the SDGs as well, as well as link up the SDGs that are more material to our business part of the materiality test. And, and the SDGs and the report itself. So we started in 2019 to have a specific SDGs report. And the reason to do it, it was because uh, the sustainability report, which is our official communication channel uh, to talk about sustainability performance, was not able to capture all the SDGs work that was happening across the university. And we were having a lot of internal and external stakeholders asking for the information, that's the information we had. So we decided to have an additional report which complements our sustainability report and our annual report that only addresses the SDGs. So in that report is a combination of quantitative and qualitative information. We have a couple of mapping exercise. We have been using uh, some external databases as part of this mapping exercise in combination with our internal KPIs and qualitative uh, information, which is our, um, it's our case studies. And to prepare our SDGs report, we basically, we're still uh, working, as, as Saul said in the beginning, we don't have an official guideline for universities to work on SDGs reporting. There are a lot of things out there. And we have been trying to incorporate uh, different aspects of different uh, documents. So here you can see some of the documents that, that we use in our benchmarking. We did benchmarking with universities as well. And we are very lucky to have at RMIT, um, at the business school, a center that um, just worked with sustainability reporting. So we have this external, uh, this internal capability, which help us, has been helping us um, a lot. And we try to be innovative as we go. And that was one of the positives of not having a specific framework to follow. You can innovate, you can try to, to improve as you go. And here, just to provide uh, some examples of um, some of the aspects we are trying to incorporate. So uh, linking with the GRI indicators, uh, we have been uh, using this indirect and direct component uh, to the SDGs. Uh, and uh, in the last report, we include a new section which is called Enhance the SDGs as a Framework. So in addition to the work we have contributing to the SDGs, there are some work happening at assessing how effective the SDGs are as a governance, as a sustainability framework. So we decided to incorporate this in our report. And those are my five minutes. <laughs> I hope we can have some discussions uh, during the, the event and over to you, Tal. Thank you so much, Renzo. I'm sure we'll have lots of really good discussion about um, the points you've raised. I'd like na uh, next like to pass on to um, Angelo. Please go ahead. You'll need to unmute, Angelo. Okay. Thank you, Tal, uh, for the introduction, to the opportunity to participate in this uh, interesting webinar. Uh, I think uh, uh, the role of university, the leadership of university worldwide is very important in this uh, uh, particular historical moment because we have the 
ethics to change, uh, to improve uh, uh, the activities uh, toward the uh, new humanities. So I think it's very important this webinar. Um, uh, the uh, experience of the University of Bologna uh, start uh, 2017 during the G7 uh, environmental ministerial meeting uh, under the Italia presidency, which took place in Bologna, uh, June, uh, 12 June uh, 2017, uh, representatives for, uh, from universities, uh, uh, research institutes, uh, from uh, the major industries uh, of the G7 countries, joined two ministerial side events uh, to identify current and future priorities for implementing a sustainable development in the G7 countries. On the occasion of this event, the University of Bologna presented the first report on the sustainability of the university by measuring its contribution to SDGs and to UN agenda. This is our uh, fifth uh, edition of the report. Uh, one of the first in the world uh, which has specific focus uh, on the UN agenda. Today, uh, as you know, a growing number of universities drew up uh, a specific report dedicated to sustainability. Uh, there are multiple international networks, of course, uh, CDSN network, and for example, RUS in uh, Italian uh, university network, and uh, many impact ratings. Uh, for the third year in a row, the Alma Mater Studiorum, the University of Bologna, is the first university in Italy for environmental sustainability, according to the last edition of the Green Matrix uh, ranking. Uh, worldwide, the Alma Mater keeps climbing the ranks and reaches positions number 12. Unibose uh, was an inaugural uh, participant in uh, the um, Times Higher Education uh, Impact Ranking, uh, rank number 20 in, uh, in this ranking in uh, 2021. To uh, fully understand the approach of the University of Bologna, uh, in particular the uh, multidisciplinary and intersectoral nature of the United Nations report, is important to grasp the diversity of uh, the, the governance of the process. Uh, in particular, the Scientific and Technical Committee uh, that oversees uh, uh, the preparation of the report at the website dedicated to it, uh, called Alma Goals. Uh, the committee was appointed by the University Board of Directors and uh, formulated the report uh, with the support of the uh, Evaluation Strategic Planning Unit and the Communication Unit. Uh, this uh, demonstrates the strong link that must exist between accountability processes, university governance, strategic planning, and institutional communication. The report uh, presents the key figures of the University of Bologna, followed by 17 sections dedicated to each SDG. The sections define the direct and indirect impact of the university activities in uh, their four uh, dimensions, uh, teaching, research, third mission, and uh, um, institution or uh, campus management uh, or operational management. Uh, this is in order to measure their contribution to advancement uh, of the UN agenda. Uh, a single objective is reported uh, using a set of metrics uh, specially formulated to match and integrate uh, uh, with institutional documents uh, adopted by the University of Bologna. Uh, sorry. Uh, in uh, this slide, we can see an example of the structure of the report uh, with uh, reference to the SDG number five, uh, gender equality. Uh, first, uh, and the dimension, uh, dimension of teaching, uh, three items are measured, cost units, students, and uh, collaboration. Uh, some SDG sheet is also integrated with uh, future data, uh, such as Goal 8, for example, uh, Work and Economic Growth reporting the percent of uh, graduates employed. Cost unit data come from a survey 
investigating the link between between the single cost unit of a study, study program and the UN Sustainable Development Goal, uh, the survey was uh, conducted asking uh, to all teachers uh, the link to each their course unit using a web procedure. Uh, more than 95% of the course units uh, in the last year has a link with uh, uh, a list uh, SDG. We have many aspect to deepen, but I think uh, there is time to the future discussion. Uh, uh, some aspect of relevance is, is the approach of the University of Bologna to measure uh, research activity outcome and impact. Uh, this uh, dimension uh, includes six items, uh, publications in a Scopus, cited by in Scopus, H index, publication per capita, and a research project, a competitive research project in particular. Uh, for example, uh, research regarding the number of publications uh, was taken from the Scopus database, considering uh, all articles from the previous five years, which contain a specific sequence of the keywords uh, and an uh, author aff affiliated with the University of Bologna. Uh, this is an approach uh, that requires continuous improvement, but I think uh, is interesting today to sharing the best practice. Thank you. Thank you very much, Angela. And uh, I think you've touched on quite a few things that a lot of people are interested in and we I no doubt will um, talk about later. Um, I'd like to pass it on to Brian, who's our next speaker. Hello, Tom, and hello, everybody. Thank you very much for inviting us. Um, I'm going to share my screen here. Um, in, in relative terms, I think that the University of Pretoria is very fresh um, around the development of sustainable development reports. Um, looking looking at, at, at how, how, how it unfolded is that um, we, we have a series of nested uh, strategic plans um, for over a 15 year period broken down into uh, one year and five year uh, horizons. And within that sustainable development is one of our key strategic themes. So, so that was the primary driver for us to start developing a sustainable development report. Um, we also participate in the Times High Education Impact Rankings, and one of the aspects of the rankings is to is, is an evaluation of whether or not we do sustainable development reporting or SDG reporting, and that last year served as the trigger, uh, rather than as the fundamental driver for us to develop a report. Um, bearing in mind that the, the rankings don't necessarily define us, but whilst they're important for us to play in, um, they, they, they don't really shape the way in which we do things and the way in which we report on them. So on that basis, we elected to develop a much broader sustainable development report, which incorporated linkages to the SDGs, um, but was really a broader reflection of our strategic intent so that we could use the report uh, to articulate our position on sustainability, to understand what we're doing and to understand what we should be doing and to engage and mobilize internal and external stakeholders. Now, in that context, uh, key to understanding and, and, and working in the sustainability space is the extent to which we are able to in, embed it and integrate it, the principles and practices of sustainable development into all aspects of what we do. And, and we try to reflect that within the report as far as, the, as, far as we're going along the journey. Um, we've integrated our, our play with the SDGs in that context. And we've looked at ways in which we influence, we enable, and we have a direct impact. So, so with, that, with that background, we, our, our report was um, framed Along, along these lines, and you, you'll, you'll see this here in, in, the, in the report. Uh, 
if you go through it. So we start off by articulating our strategic intent with the leadership messages from the vice chancellor, the deputy principal of research and innovation. And we start, we, we incorporated the early um, development of our strategic framework for, develop, uh, for sustainable development that would be applicable to all functions and all aspects uh, of the university. We then, we then go into the body of our report, which looks at taking our strategic intent, how do we start translating this into action? And we've, and we've broken up sustainable development or how we play in sustainable development into broad themes of firstly, the operational sustainability, sustainable development that, that institutions and, and universities generally look at around people practices for, for sustainability and moving towards a resilient or green campus. And then going to our core functions of teaching, education, uh, teaching and learning, research and, um, and engagement. And we then clustered our 10 faculties into, into three groups. Those faculties that focus primarily on sustainable economies, those focusing on the environment, technology and innovation, and those focusing on um, the, the inclusive societies and capable institutions, which really brings in what do what our core functions do in relation to sustainable development. Now, within these two areas, for each section, we mapped our activities to the sustainable development goals, going down to the 169 uh, targets to see, well, where do we play in relation to influencing, enabling, or a direct impact. We then focused on some transdisciplinary case studies because that is another key strategic theme that the university is focusing on. And we selected two of a raft of, of case studies and then also looked at our broader engagement uh, in society through our networks, our partnerships and four strategic platforms that the university is, is focusing on to drive a, a sustainable development transdisciplinary agenda inside and outside the university. And we close the, the, the conversation by pulling together the prioritized SDGs that we lined up with, drawn from the content in the body of the report in operational sustainability and through our core functions. Um, around the way in which we developed the report, um, we, we, we started engaging with the leadership of the university, the deans, the deputy deans of research and innovation, and they collectively helped us to shape the report intent, its design, its development, and they form the core of a steering committee to ensure effective governance. We then, after having clustered each of the faculties, we facilitated cluster workshops. Okay, and each of the cluster workshops had about 30 to 40 participants from the, the, um, the faculties, and, and they lasted about three hours where we drew on content from them and and so that they, as the content owners, could start enriching uh, the report. In addition to this, we had some desktop reviews for additional ideas and activities, and we followed through on the outcomes and the content coming from those workshops uh, and drawing on other sources such as the faculty websites. Uh, a very small team wrote the report, which is based on the faculty workshops, and, and we circulated the drafts um, for review and for enrichment by the content owners in a number of iterative cycles. And we probably had about three cycles um, with the content owners so that they could fundamentally own and reflect what they believed they were doing. And ultimately with this, we, we went on and signed it off uh, for publication. And, and that, that in, a, in a snapshot, and it's all in the content of the report, is what we really did. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much, Brian. And and again, I think we'll have time to cover a lot of the things in more details later. Um, just seeing from the questions that are coming in from the audience, um, a lot of these things are really of interest to them. All right, so I'm going to pass on to Julian, who will um, cover the last report that we are going to include today. Thanks so much, Julian. Thanks, Charlene. Um, good morning to all my European 
African and Middle Eastern colleagues and good afternoon to Far Eastern and Australasian colleagues and I'm really sorry to any North American or South American colleagues. Um, just to start by saying um, that I'll share some slides in a moment and I wanted to start first of all just by acknowledging the work of SDSN on this, uh, particularly um, Tal was involved in the publication in 2017 about how to get started with the SDGs and we used that as the only thing I could look at when we first developed our report to so just to acknowledge that and to say a big thank you because this is very much a, a shared endeavour and I think the universities today are really breaking ground together on this but that publication was really important Tal. So I wanted to start with our first publication which we started developing in 2018 which I think if you can see my mouse hovering over the bottom right screen um, that publication, I wanted to start though in 1824, very quickly. Um, I'm not the university. Sorry, Julian, yet, but... you might need to um, um, make the presentation full screen. Bigger, sorry. Say yeah, it again. it's a little, uh, it looks like it needs to be full screen. I don't know if it looks different. On full screen, just is that better or I, I put it yeah, on. Yeah, that's view. better. That's better, is it? But, but is that better? Yeah. It's not in presentation mode for some weird reason. But... So I'm, I've just clicked presentation mode. Is that now in full screen? No. No, but, okay. but, but it's good enough. <laughs> is that okay now? Is that better? Yes, I, I think it's good enough. Okay, thanks. I'm sorry about that. Maybe there's some okay. settings I've updated since I last did it. But let me, um, let me just say, I'll, I'll start very quickly in 18... Uh, 24 then uh, to get to our publication um, more recently because I think the, SDF, S, um, the SDGs are really the latest manifestation of goals of the world and universities have existed for hundreds of years. We've got Bologna here today, 1088 I think um, Anglo University was formed. You know universities have been around a long time and universities at their best are there to address the big questions in the world and that's what we're talking about today through SDGs, how do universities demonstrate their impact against the, the top priorities in the world, some of our greatest challenges of our civilization. And in the case of my university, we were formed um, uh, in a city that was the first in the world to have an industrial revolution in Manchester in the UK. And we were developed to um, undertake education for the working classes, and um, but also for the rising middle class in Manchester who were developing machine technology. So a mechanics institute was formed and then we incorporated a medical school and we were also one of the first universities to admit without religious tests for entry. And I feel like we've really been shaping uh, social progress for a long time through the establishment of um, key developments. So votes for women, uh, the Pankhurst suffragette movement was born in Manchester and she was a graduate of our university, Mary Stokes, who developed birth control for women through to the development of modern computer technology. But the bit, I think the common link with all of this is in 2010, our new president, Nancy Rothwell, our first ever female president in our nearly 200 years of history, developed a new strategy in 2011 called Advancing the Manchester 2015 Agenda. And in there, we committed to three simple goals, which I think everybody remembers about Manchester. Goal number one was research. Goal number two was teaching. And I bet you most of the universities on this call today also have those two goals but uniquely in British higher education we put social responsibility as our third goal in 2011 so we've been doing that for 10 years in various iterations of the strategy we've kept social responsibility as a core goal in our most recent strategy our future we've committed to aligning our work to SDGs as some of our performance indicators and priorities in our corporate level strategy so that's led neatly to the design of a report which came out of this strategy. We also have a, a motto. Um, it's a bit of a joke that the first language in the UK among the ruling classes is Latin. And again, um, Anglo, um, our, our motto, um, knowledge, wisdom, humanity, cognito, uh, sapientia, humanitas. And that reflects those three goals. The, the knowledge, our research, the wisdom, passing on that knowledge to our teaching and the humanitas, the humanity of our purpose. And that's led us as a, a university, um, just a moment then. So that's led us to um, a report in 2018, 2019 against the SDGs. And we took a, a conceptual approach of looking at four factors. First of all, research. Uh, secondly, teaching. 
and students. Thirdly, our public engagement work. And fourthly, our university operations. And that was the first time we were able to um, develop all of those things together at the university level. And fortunately for us, because we had social responsibility as a strategy, we've been doing some so, um, social responsibility reporting already. And we were really keen to ensure that if you're looking at an issue like gender equality or climate change, that we looked at the different facets of a university's contribution to those. And traditionally in universities, those things fall into specialist areas. And I think what's interesting about the conversation today, all of us are trying to sit outside of one specific university agenda and try to bring these different things together. And that's both the art and the science, if you like, of doing this reporting. So we developed those four headings. And if you imagine a grid of 17 SDGs with four columns of um, research, teaching, engagement, and operations, that's kind of the mental uh, approach we took to this. And um, we, the, the report itself, we did some contribution mapping initially, uh, but the methodologies that are available now, even uh, three years on from doing that report, are wildly different. They're much better, they're more improved. And I think um, you, you've seen from Bologna just now, some of the examples of how you can use research metrics. I think the teaching metrics are different. They vary from university to university, country to country. I think the research ones though are very comparable now between nations. In terms of um, the report itself, I think a philosophical question is, is this um, for us, is this report summative or formative? For us, it was both. Um, it's very important for the, this report to also be formative. What does this mean for what we're trying to achieve and what we're trying to change? So we did a, a written report, and I think the links are there for you to have a look at this. We're doing an update, of, of, of a refresh of this at the moment. We also accompanied this with a, a shorthand version, which was an interactive version you could look at online. We also did a, a video, and I think at the last hand, there are more than 4,000 views of that. Um, and our, our report itself, when we produced this, we had more than 2,000 downloads in the first, um, first couple of months uh, of producing that report. And that's unheard of in university reporting in, 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 in my university to have so many downloads. They came from all around the world. And um, so it's obviously something that, and it, they didn't just come from within the HE sector. So we did some tracking of who was downloading the report. And that was very, very interesting. The benefits to this, I think uh, are clear. Um, th th this is something that, has led to conversations happening within the university around our culture and our activity. So by showing, you can tell a story about what, um, about the, the types of impacts of the university. So very good reporting, I think, as well as to the external world, all of us who work in universities know that we're really poor as institutions of having a, a university-wide view on things. We're a series of separate enterprises and to bring things together in this format was quite powerful. One of the big benefits for, for Manchester, I'll just finish by saying that we've been the top university in the UK in the ranking. That came along after we decided to do a report, but we've been first in the UK for three years in a row. And indeed, last year, we were first in the whole world, which was um, both a surprise and uh, an enormous amount of pleasure. Rankings, though, don't drive this work. Why I think we've done consistently well in them is because we've been on this journey since 1824, but certainly since 2011, with our strategy to have social responsibility as a core goal. That's driven our wish to report and our wish to communicate what we do. So I'll finish up there and I look forward to the discussion. Thanks, Tom. Thank you very much. And we will move on to the discussion now. Um, again, please um, share your questions through the q and I'm gonna use my uh, MC prerogative to ask a few questions and uh, of each of the speakers and, and they might expand onto bigger discussions if, if um, other speakers want to um, jump in as well. Um, I'm also keen to see, um, to hear more from the participants, particularly um, if your university has already done an SDG report, can you share it with us in the chat? I'm very curious to um, see who else is, is um, been producing these kinds of reports. I think it'd be really great to see that. Um, I had a really hard time deciding on questions for the panelists because I have so many different questions um, and so many different themes that are emerging from this discussion. 
So let's get started and see where we go. And yes, please um, add any other questions that you have um, in the Q&A. So I'm going to actually start with you, Julianne, and it's going to be a combined question because I couldn't decide <laughs> which one to go with. Um, one is, I, I want you to expand a little bit about what are the SDGs allowing you to do that you weren't able to do with the previous concepts around sustainability and social responsibility. And kind of related to that is um, what has been the benefit of creating your report? You mentioned that briefly. Um, what have been the, um, how have you been using that as a tool for change within the university? And if, if other panelists want to um, add anything, maybe put your hand up. That would be the easiest way if you can work out how to do that. Carl. Um, I think it's a really good question because the until you the, the currency of universities are written reports, you know, we're based on the written word, you know, and I think it, it has tremendous impact internally to show people what's um, possible when you bring things together. Uh, particularly, we, we know that the SDGs are not just things that happen in other parts of the world. I live and work in the global north, it's, uh, and I know we've got colleagues from a range of different countries around the world, and there's a perception in a country like mine that the SDGs are like the MDGs, the Millennium Development Goals, which were about um, largely an anti-poverty strategy in the global south. The SDGs apply to all countries, all sectors. They're as much about what you do locally as what happens globally. Despite us all knowing that, and probably many people in, on the call knowing that, I think within our universities, you have to show that. So that was quite powerful, actually, in our report, where we were talking about, I don't know, initiatives to get local unemployed people to get jobs in the university. And that's part of the SDGs. And actually, until you show that in a report, I think that's quite difficult for people to grasp. I also think that um, universities uh, in my country, and I know this is a big issue in the United States as well, there's a real challenge around license to operate and there's culture wars happening and universities being seen being seen in societies as something uh, quite elite institutions that are out of touch with society and i think aligning a report against the world's biggest goals allows us to answer that challenge which is being asked of us all about what's the point of a university uh, why do we fund these things what what does a university actually um deliver to society and i think aligning the university to the future challenges of the world there can be no better way to do this in my view than the sdg so i think why reporting as a technical exercise has gathered momentum is not because of the technicalities it themselves i think it's the profound purpose of what we're trying to do which is the most exciting aspect and that i think is what's galvanized people within the university more than the technical elements is that profound sense of purpose Great. Would anyone else like to add on that? Rinza? Can I, yeah. Uh, building on uh, what Julian uh, has just said for, for us uh, talking about the RMIT experience, I think it's pretty much aligned with uh, what Julian has said. There were a lot of benefits in having the discussions internally, issues about sustainability that we have been discussing for a while, the SGs help with the link to the uh, a global agenda. And I think there, there is uh, something that's really important to discuss as well, which is, for example, I, I see the engagement with the SDGs through two different ways. I think the first way in which most of us are doing is we are linking our activities, we are linking our strategies with the SDGs. So it actually demonstrates how we are contributing or minimizing the negative impact to the SDGs. I think this is something very, very important. But the second aspect of the SDGs, I think it's about the transformational agenda. So it's about having the discussions internally. In addition to everything that we have been doing for the last five, 10, three years, doesn't matter. But with the SDGs now, is there anything that we can do in a different way? How can we use the SDGs as a transformational change? Uh, we don't have the answers. I don't have the answers yet. We still have the discussions, but I think this is something very, very positive for all of us discuss as well. So it's not about what we have been doing for the last five, ten years, but in the future, how can we use the SDGs to change, to make the difference, to do things beyond the business as usual. 
and I think this is uh, is, a, is more a, a questions in a topic to discuss rather than a, a, a response. <laughs> Great, thank you. So I'd actually like to throw it to Brian next and maybe explore that a little bit more about um, how your report is clearly part of a much larger strategic plan that the university has. And I think this is true for um, pretty much all of the other um, panellists. Can you talk a bit about what the role of the report is in terms of the larger process that the university is trying to implement? Okay. Yeah, well, you know, one of the interesting things about um, University of Pretoria is that we've fairly um, quickly um, come to the position where we need to reimagine ourselves um, in a very dynamic, challenging and uncertain world. And, and we're, we're asking ourselves the questions around um, what should an, an institution of higher education look like and how should we be setting ourselves up and building ourselves to be resilient in a very, very changing world. Um, and and a, a key aspect of, of that uh, resilience and that reimagining is sustainable development because what we do uh, and how we do it and where we're going to it is, is intimately related to and inseparable from the concept of sustainable development, okay? Because that's what we should be doing and the way in which we're influencing society and contributing to shaping society is um, giving expression to our role. Um, and, and so within that context, with, with, with the, the, the intimate relationship between uh, strategy and sustainable development, because sustainable development is strategy, the, the report in itself is a key aspect. And, and I, think, I think has been one of the triggers or one of, one of the, the, the things that have influenced the way in which the the strategic framework or the reimagining strategic framework that we're building is evolving. Um, what, what I think has also happened is that in, in designing um, our strategic framework, I think one of the critical parts or designing it and translating it into action, one of the critical aspects is the way in which we engage uh, the university community from a leadership level through to different aspects of, of, of the university. And, um, and as we developed the report, um, I think one of the, the most useful things is that the process we, we adopted was an engaging process. It was, it was underpinned by design thinking and, um, and we engaged the university uh, and certainly the leadership at different levels of the university um, to start understanding what they're doing and what others are doing so that we can move to a, a far more uh, collaborative and transdisciplinary approach that is built on strong intradisciplinary and multidisciplinary practice. Okay. Did anyone else like to add anything? more about how the report is helping you or has helped you achieve the a broader goals around institutional change? No? Okay, that's good. Huh? Looks like you covered it, Brian. Oh, Angelo, you go. Oh, sorry. Uh, in the uh, experience of the University of Bologna, um, the uh, main challenge is uh, are the, um, uh, to change uh, the, um, the, to rethink the performance measurement systems of the universities by questioning uh, mechanism uh, which focus uh, traditionally on inputs or outputs uh, indicators, uh, shifting them to outcome and impact. Uh, in, the, in the, our experience, this is very challenging because uh, we uh, need to promote uh, a different culture, a data culture, 
uh, is a, a very investment in a uh, process of uh, collection, um, elaboration, interpretation, communication of a real event, a significant data on a, a university uh, policies. This require uh, a new decision-making process at all, uh, at all levels, uh, from the board, the central board, to school, uh, to departments. Um, to reduce uh, also the asymmetric information uh, that exists between uh, 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 academics and administration. Uh, on, on one hand, uh, and between administration, uh, a university, and citizens, uh, students, and other stakeholders, uh, while preventing uh, the opportunistic uh, behavior uh, that uh, may result from complex uh, contexts, which are uh, the university organization. Thank you, Angelo. And I actually was going to ask you specifically about um, the performance measures that you have been developing over time. Um, so maybe to, I would, I, I'd, I'd love to um, you to expand that, but also I'm kind of curious, how has your report changed over the years, in particular around how what data you're measuring? And secondly, what approach have you taken to measuring outcomes and impacts um, and not just inputs and outputs. And maybe reflect on where you think further work is needed. It's a big question. <laughs> uh, I think uh, in this perspective, it is uh, relevant to um, to think about uh, performance indicators as a, um, a dynamic, uh, a systematic uh, process. Uh, be conscious uh, that building a, a data set uh, to foster indicators is a, a continuous process, uh, uh, improvement process. Uh, in the short run, deals with uh, of information. Uh, or inaccurate and unreliable information. So we need to look in the perspective to continue improvement commitment in this, in this uh, approach. Thank you. Does anyone else have um, views around um, how we measure outcomes and impacts? I, I I'm not sure how to put my hand up here. Um, but can I can I can I give a, a stab? Can I give a stab at that? Yeah, go um, first, Brian, and then we'll go to Renzo. Okay. Um, because it's, it's also linked to a question that that I've been posted uh, on on the chat from Angel Calderon, um, and I think one of the challenges is that um, the is the sustainable development goals and their sub uh, targets and metrics are a mix of hard uh, targets and metrics and aspirations and suggestions around um, processes that we should go through. So, so getting a next set of, of um, metrics and indicators is, is a challenge that all of us face and, and we need to be going through the process. And, and we have started that uh, within the University of Pretoria to say, look, how do we start measuring the softer stuff um, around outcomes and impacts and recognizing that uh, your, your outcomes are somewhat more complex than your outputs and your impacts are not limited to the impacts that, that I experienced are not limited to a single uh, player. Um, and there are a raft of different players that contribute to a broader set of impacts. So, so it's starting to navigate that complexity, particularly in the social space. Um, and, and so we're, 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 we're trying to figure out, and we're, we're definitely not there, in terms of how do we start breaking down the different components of social 
uh, outcomes and social impacts and what are the, the drivers that, that lead to that so that we can understand them in a, better, in a better way and then start distilling them into something more tangible. Um, uh, an example is uh, the, the um, IFC have developed a, a, a financial valuation tool to measure the impact of um, all the, all the our contributions to soft issues, but distilling that down to a, 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 um, a valuation kind of model using things like, um, it's, it's um, multiple inputs, the extent to which we manage risk, the extent to which we, we, we mitigate risk. And, and I think that might probably be the way in which to go. Uh, not not in financial terms only, but but certainly using such multivariate uh, types of analysis. Analysis. Interesting. Renzo, did you want to add to that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, building on on Brian's comments, I think there are a couple of issues that are very important to bring in that discussion. And I think the first one is uh, the way the SDGs were designed themselves. So they were designed initially to be used by governments. So there is an aspect for us as when we have to translate this global agenda designed for governments and apply in the context of universities. So it's something, some, for example, some of the targets and indicators, it's really hard to change uh, and translate properly to, to the university world. Another aspect that's uh, it's really hard, and uh, Brian, you, you, you mentioned it, it's, it's really hard, we're always struggling yet, is how can we, uh, as a university, we actually, are in a very good position because we are addressing all SDGs. When you're talking about a research, you can have a research project addressing each one of the SDGs. And this is one, uh, some of the universities we are trying to come up with direct and indirect contributions. So uh, Pretoria University has done something really good as well. When they were talking about, you have my direct impact and I have also the influence aspect, which is contributed to develop the SDGs. Another, the third component that I think it's important to, to bring to the discussion is we have the SDGs at goal level, which if you just look at the goal level, you ended up linking everything with SDG because it's such a broad agenda, right? So this is, I think it's, it's an exercise that we have to understand a little bit better the targets and indicators uh, because then you can have a, a better understanding about what are the main issues that the United Nations is trying to address. Because otherwise you, you can look, as, as I said before, you can look to everything and you can link everything with ISDG goal. And I think that's not the point, especially when we're talking about reporting. In the long term, I think it's important to, to have this credibility component incorporating the work we do. Uh, that is in favor for, for all of us, I guess. And that's actually something, Renzo, I wanted to ask you because you've mentioned accountability a few times. And I wanted to know how that is reflected, how you've built that into your report. Um, I think my reflection around a lot of the indicators that I've seen used, uh, how do you tell that you are actually progressing, <laughs> that you're doing better? What, what should we be aiming for even? Um, is, is there a, a target or is it, is it just progress? I think yeah. it's a very hard question, but I'll let you. Yeah, no, it's right. I'll, I'll, I'll give you my, my view initially, and then I'll provide some examples about what's uh, some of the discussions we have here at MIT at the moment. So I think in my, my opinion is uh, we have to be transparent about the work we're doing. We can have different methodologies, different approaches, different mapping exercise, but I think in the end of the day, the more important thing is to be transparent about what, we, what, what we're doing. So if you were using our internal mapping exercise, if you were using Elsevier's uh, mapping exercise, uh, if you were using specific keywords, I think that's the more important component. Be transparent about the work you're doing. That's the, I think it, it's a must, especially because we don't have a specific standard. We don't have specific APIs that are common agreed across the sector. So we still, uh, I think, in, in my opinion, this is something that might be very useful to have, and maybe SGSN could try to, to develop this issue as a, a different project. You know, what does it mean? What are the KPIs for universities to measure transformation? 
I think this will be something very useful to have. And uh, at RMIT, uh, some of the things, uh, and, and it's a very tricky situation because, for example, in one hand, we want to engage with people. The more people talking about the SDGs, the better. But we came many times across a situation, for example, when we're discussing, you know, people keen to talk about their projects. And you say, oh, that's good. Uh, what do you think are the SDGs you are contributing to? Say, all of them. Yeah, I'm contributing to all of them. And it's a very tricky exercise because you want to engage people, you want to have people engage with the agenda, but you also want to be accountable. So in this whole big SDGs agenda, what are actually the main aspects that we are contributing to? I think it is, is a, the balance is still something that we have to find, and that links to the credibility of the board. Um, again, it's a new thing for all of us, we're still struggling, but I think it's important to have this consideration and we're preparing the content for the board. I'm wondering if other panelists have experienced this kind of balance how do you separate what is related to the sdgs between something that's it's, it's a bit more of a stretch no no yes do it. Um, i think that uh, uh, has happened uh, in uh, uh, in the business world in a corporation for uh, corporate social responsibility, uh, I think that, that uh, also in the university sector is relevant the risk of uh, greenwashing, uh, windows dressing. Uh, I, it is a high the risk uh, uh, on this point because uh, because it is more difficult to meet to me measure the the impacts, uh, direct or indirect. Uh, effect of the university on SDGs because SDGs require, uh, as uh, Renzo said, uh, long-term perspectives and a systematic approach uh, to understand the, the, the multiple effects and the trade-offs uh, between the goals. So I think that uh, in this moment uh, we um, uh, need uh, 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 get lines uh, uh, to uh, define the uh, conditions that uh, determine an um, uh, efficacy uh, approach uh, to uh, elaborate uh, accountability and uh, governance based on the UN agenda. Uh, I think, of course, uh, uh, at, the, uh, at the investment on uh, performance system measurement, but also to uh, a cooperative culture uh, inside the university, uh, between the universities, the communities, and uh, worldwide, all the stakeholders, uh, academic uh, research uh, partners uh, at different levels. Uh, I think also at the uh, capacity of the university governance to redefine the, the budgeting process, because uh, if uh, resources go, uh, uh, is addressed in a different uh, way, uh, to the agenda, the, uh, we have a new approach to windows dressing, not to change the, the, the approach uh, to sustainability. Carl, I'll have a go just making a point there as well. I think um, there's, a, there's a theme in some of the questions in the chat around, you know, can there be some international standard for this? And I think it's really difficult because for two reasons. First of all, um, universities are incredibly autonomous institutions and it's very difficult to get something agreed within one university let alone the whole country or the whole world um the, the danger of that though is that other people will do it for us which are times higher are trying to do so there is a tension there but i don't think we're going to be able to invent something that can that can compete with people at the times higher so that's a that's a tension there that's the first thing the second thing is that um even if you ignored universities and just looked at the data to achieve the un sustainable development goals we have um, a government body in the uk called the office for national statistics the ons and they've done work globally looking at countries and what the types of data sets that different countries have got um which are internationally comparable for the sdgs and it's really uneven um even when you ignore universities if you just took i don't know issues of farming for example around the world and agriculture 
what kind of standards are there? Where does the data come from? So if governments themselves can't solve this, I think it's going to be really difficult for very more autonomous institutions because universities are more autonomous in, in, in many senses than, than governments might be um, who are tied into some legal relationships, which universities are not. So I think if we're hoping that somebody's going to do this for us, I think we're probably waiting for the wrong solution. I think the better solution is the sort of thing we're doing today, which is to share practice, try and call out examples of good practice and learn from each other. And, um, you know, I think uh, this is sort of try and get to the highest common denominator across the sector and challenge each other and share what we're doing. That's probably more realistic. That's, that's um, I think, really fantastic. Uh, I think we, we've captured in this discussion a lot of the issues that have been coming through the questions and around standards. And, and I think that's really interesting. Maybe a good um, segue to ask around okay where we are now what do we see actually as best practice any university that is starting now what what should they be doing how do they get started from your experience what are the kind of essentials and i think maybe the follow-up question will be well where do we need to look to be improving and i think we've touched on some of that but it'd be good to capture that a bit later. So who wants to have a go first maybe around what they kind of see as, as the elements of best practice on SDG reporting at the moment? Is, is this a hard question? I think it is a hard question. I think on research, just to say that's easier, and I think we've seen some good examples, particularly in the latest Bologna one that Angelo shared there. I think um, just compared to three years ago, the types of metrics available from Elsevier, um, there's been a huge amount of progress. So when we first did our report, we used the SDSN keywords in your report trial and we mapped those and we did our own report and it generated a large, uh, you know, a larger number of reports than what the Elsevier one does. But that was the only thing we had, you know, so we created this and we wrote about it in our methodology um, section and, and um, acknowledged that. Now it's a different kettle of fish and I think it's, that's easier. I think where the difficulty is, and I'd love a, a similar type of tool to Elsevier to be able to map um, course information. So I think that's the next frontier. Um, and there are some universities who are doing this using IT systems to match course programs. And I'm really keen to learn from that because we did a manual exercise, which was very laborious and I've been responding to some comments in the chat. I think this is, um, I, I think there is some worth in doing this, but you couldn't do this every year, this manual process. Um, so something that can be automated and other colleagues on the panel may have some examples of that or people in the chat might have a good example of an automated process. I'd be keen to look at that. The other impacts then around your estate and other things and your governance, etc. Again, I think it's something, as Angela was saying, it has to be driven through your university governance. Many of these issues precede the SDGs and when we have something that will follow from the SDGs, these issues won't go away. Um, so there are all sorts of targets around gender and carbon and um, uh, disadvantage, etc., which in a national context in the UK are really important and we're measured a lot around these indicators. So some of them, they, they are quite rigorous where we'll be setting targets. So that's what I'd say. I think research is easier now than a few years ago, much more comparable. The rest of it, I think we have to define more ourselves and um, we're never going to have as much resource as the times higher to do that. So they do have some interesting metrics. Yeah. I think the SDG mapping topic <laughs> is, is something that is, is fascinating in and of itself. We might have to do a separate webinar on that one. <laughs> Angela, did you want to add anything? Oh, sorry, Brian. Oh, no, Angela and then Brian, sorry. Angela. Uh, I came to outline the, the, the need uh, to uh, create new standards. Uh, uh, globally standards to uh, uh, reporting uh, uh, the university impact on uh, uh, SDGs. Uh, this uh, because uh, we need to uh, take a different uh, perspective between uh, 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 university reporting and impact ranking. 
uh, we need to clarify the difference of this approach because uh, if the uh, if the university don't have standards the risk if you uh, use the criteria of impact ranking to give standards to university but it's different the the, the, the aims the scope the approach the meters so in this moment uh, for example at the university of bologna we think about uh, to start with a research project on a new um, keywords to measure the projects, uh, the scopus, but uh, is a, a field where there is a relevant opportunities for, for example, the use of uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, the semantic approach uh, and uh, to, to um, analyze the, the the impact uh, through um, project uh, and uh, and uh, publications but this is a problem of uh, uh, cooperative learning at the worldwide uh, uh, level is not the only experience that make the difference okay i'm going to pass to brian and then to Renzo. yeah yeah i'm i'm, I'm going to be uh, pretty provocative okay um, and it relates, it relates to standards, it relates to um, the automated processes, we need to from here. So, but no, I, I don't have the strong academic uh, background. So I'm coming from the corporate world uh, previously in, in my life. And, and, and the corporate world was pretty far advanced in terms of the concept of integrated reporting. Okay. And, um, and, and, and what my experience was, was that most companies, okay, would label the integrated reports or reports as integrated reports, but in effect would have combined reports, right? And, and, and the, the key thing that I would argue that would drive integration or integrated reporting as reflected in a set of metrics and, and, and data that we use um, was actually having integrated thinking first, integrated processes in terms of the way in which we do things, and then that would lend itself to integrated reporting. Now, applying that and translating that to the academic world. So if we, if we dive onto the, um, the suite of metrics that we use uh, and how we collect them, in the absence of having clear strategic intent and direction of where you want to go to and having processes that you clearly understand and clearly design so that they can give you the indicators that you're looking for to measure yourself against the direction and the intent that you're setting out i think it lands up being pretty transactional and and similarly you know in in, in the in the corporate uh, world um, where there was a whole lot of activity and excitement of lining up with the SDGs, you, you get three types of companies. Okay? And I, I'm looking at the university institution as, as an enterprise in the sense. You'd get firstly those that start off and, and mapped their existing activities to the SDGs, which is, which is what we've done. And it's a necessary first step. But um, they were then satisfied and said, well, okay, we're contributing, we're doing a really great job and stroke themselves on their backs and, um, and, and, and that demonstration was sufficient. Okay? There was another group of companies that said, well, you know what, we, we, we're gonna select a specific SDG or a small number of SDGs and that sometimes lines up with our approach to the rankings and we're gonna focus that and we're gonna use that to position ourselves. And I think both of those are relatively transactional. And then don't necessarily shift the game. Although with, with the second group, you might be shifting the game in a particular SDG. Third group of companies, and this is relatively small, would look at themselves internally and say, how do we actually change ourselves? Build on our poor capabilities and use those to shift the game in the sustainable development and SDG space. And, and, and that's where 
that's where I think there will be major transformation, but it does call for us to look internally in terms of how do we redesign ourselves, redesign our processes so that we can drive far greater impact rather than looking at what we're doing, accepting that and saying that's great. I think it's it's provocative, but I think it's something that everyone is probably already thinking about and definitely an area that um, is needs to be considered into the future. Renza, do, do you do you still want to jump in on this one? Yeah, no, and just uh, adding to, to Brian's comments, uh, something very quick. Mm. I think something that's really important for us as well is I think there are two components. The first one, I think we have opportunity, as Brian said before, we have opportunity to learn with corporates in some of the sectors that has been in that path for many years. But I think GRI, the Global Report Initiative, is in, is, is in place. They start in 96. So they pretty much advanced a lot in sustainability reporting. Some of the sectors you see uh, a lot of, you know, they are advancing very well in sustainability reporting. So I think there is an opportunity for us as a university sector, educational sector, to learn with these different sectors. And the other aspect that's really relevant as well is uh, the localization of the SDGs. It's a global agenda, but we have to understand that, you know, my context is different than the university in Australia here, in, you know, close to me, they have other contexts. Uh, my context is different from Julian's context in UK, which is different from Angelo in Italy, which is different from Brian's in South Africa. And I think we all have to understand, and if there is something that I don't like much about the ranking, is that the ranking is actually telling us what's relevant for universities. And we might be in a situation where we will be all responding the rankings because we have to respond, but we're not looking at ourselves and what is actually relevant from the SDGs in my context. So I think it's uh, uh, using Brian's, uh, you know, provocative, I, I would like to have to be provocative provocative here as well and uh, ask ourselves, should we keep continuing following the ranking? Uh, and I think we can use the present benefits on it, but it's not what should drive our, our SDGs work. Great. Uh, and I think being provocative is, is really important, but in the last few minutes that we have, I actually want us to um, maybe focus on how to support um, universities that are starting in the process or looking to improve the process. Um, and particularly, what advice you'd give to universities that are starting? And can you share specific tools and indicator frameworks or anything that you have been using that will help others in this journey? As much as I'd love to talk about everything else. And, and to start with, does anyone um, have handy the link to the Elsevier research metrics? Because I've been trying to Google it, but it's, it's taking me too long. Oh, thank you, Renzo. Great. Have there been any other tools that you've used? Or other? I, I'm, I'm actually going to go one by one and, and get your advice and recommendations for beginner universities. And Angela, since you've unmuted, I'm yeah. going to you first. Uh, from uh, um, the, the, I think uh, that in this moment uh, uh, is important to transform the uh, UN report from a, a document to a process of stakeholder engagement because uh, I think that is the uh, very useful approach to. Um, uh, determine uh, uh, transformation in the society by the university. And this is a, a challenge because uh, we need to speak the language of the people, of the students, and other stakeholders, that is different from academic uh, language, approach, uh, time, and methods. Uh, so we need to uh, uh, take uh, project uh, together, students, for example, because uh, in my university, we have a, uh, we are a, a mega Ateneo, a big university. So the, 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 the opportunities to engage students in a project that uh, 
uh, are directed to uh, address the, uh, the SDGs is uh, the, the, the very opportunity, the protagonism of the students, uh, and to transform teaching in uh, service learning. Uh, take part in the project to promote project, for example, for, with uh, municipalities, with uh, uh, industries, uh, no profit organization. We have a, a potential of this, and it's important to uh, uh, take a new approach in teaching to look at the achieving in uh, social skills by the students. I think is the, uh, the challenge for the future. Thank you. Julian, would you like to go next? Yeah, so there's been a lot of questions, isn't there, around the, the, yeah, how to do this. And I think f for me, um, one of the key things was getting uh, some buy-in from the relevant parts of the university to, to form a small team, even if that's virtual, to get people's engagement. So you need somebody that can do bibliometrics. So we, I know who that person is in my university and we absolutely rely on that person to do all of the kind of the, the, the database interrogation around our research. But then also you need people aligned to teaching, you need good um, relationships across estates and equality and diversity, etc. So you need a, a, a team of people that can do that. And then centrally, I think you need somebody to chair it or steer it because a lot of these things fall down a crack in one part of a university. So somebody needs to take responsibility and then I think it's a great project for something like a graduate intern within a university to be able to do because there's a lot of um, analytical skills and synthesis. There's an art as well as a science to this as well. Uh, and then your communications colleagues as well within a university. So this is why I think it's quite a challenge. There's not a blueprint, but also to do this, it takes a whole institution approach and universities are structured differently around the world. And some universities have an obvious part of a university that can do this. Probably everybody in this call does. And that's why they got going on these reports a bit sooner than other universities. But I think that's what you need. Um, what's helped now, I think, and this is where I do think they're very different beasts, as Angelo said, the, the, the impact ranking and the SDG report in there for different purposes. But it does mean that universities now have assembled information, not perhaps because they wanted to, um, but because the, uh, for, the, for communications purposes, but because of ranking purposes. But nonetheless, it strikes me there's a different question now, which we've not asked ourselves directly but i'm just listening to people today if you've got all this data that you've submitted to the ranking in a private capacity how can we turn that into a report i think that's what some people are saying in the chat and i think it goes back to what anglo said these are different purposes i think you need to um recognize not be driven not let the tail wag the dog if you know what i mean by that saying so we have to make sure that the ranking doesn't um drive what we do. It has to be our own institution, mission, strategies, objectives. Thank you so much. Brian, Renzo, would you like to add any other advice? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll follow up from, from one of the, uh, the points that, that Gillian uh, has just made. <clears throat> and he said, there's, there's no blueprint, right? Um, and, and in many ways, uh, you'll be navigating uh, the fog and will need to be comfortable with complexity as you decide to set out on developing uh, an ST report. Some, some of, some of the, the markers that I think are really important is that across most universities, I would anticipate that at a, at a, at a frontline level, the, the teachers and the researchers are are really interested and are already doing work within the sustainable development space and the SDG space. Yeah? Now, in, in that context, one of the critical things and, and a critical starting point is to get the university uh, executive, the university leadership at a, at a vice chancellor level on board. Uh, and, and, and once that leadership is on board, it sets the tone it sets the climate, it sets the culture, or it starts giving, giving expression to the, the, shaping the culture, right? And, um, and all, all hierarchies within the university will tend to follow suit. And also 
there will be appropriate allocation of resources. Uh, if the, the executive are fully committed to this. Now, now you'll find that in some institutions, the universities are already committed, the executive are, is committed to this, leverage off that, okay? Um, in, in other universities, they might not yet be there. So um, they, I think there are different ways of, of, of playing with it. Um, in some areas, I, I found when I was in the corporate world, I had to be a Trojan horse in the nicest possible way and, and get things to emerge and uh, start influencing the executive to the extent that they said, yeah, but of course, this is our idea. Um, and yes, it's important. And, and a key part of that is speaking the language of the executive, understanding the objectives, the intent, the direction of the university, and then translating that on their behalf. Okay. The, sec the, second, the second piece is, is around, uh, and it's been mentioned by all of the colleagues, understanding who the players are and developing relationships with them. Develop strong relationships, mutually beneficial relationships, um, but um, you, you can't have a report where you're in a corner office and just collecting other people's data and then submitting it on their behalf. Okay? They need to own it. They need to engage with it. And, and, and setting, up, setting out to, to establish those relationships with the critical people is going to be really important. Thank you, Brian. And I, I really feel bad. Um, we have to finish in two minutes. So Renzo, I'm gonna give you one minute. Um, I'm really sorry. I feel like there's so much more um, to talk about and I know we haven't reached all the questions, but um, we do need to wrap up on time. Oh, that's perfect. I don't have much to say with a great panel. They said a lot of good stuff already. Uh, I think the two aspects that are, that, are, that are important, I think this high level commitment, having resources in place that was said before, as well as having this engagement with things happening on the ground, to understand what's happening, having these relationships on the ground, I think it's very useful, as well as what Angel, uh, Angelo said before. Uh, it's important to understand the reason you're doing the, the reporting and who are your key stakeholders. I mean, internally, what's your strategy? What's the point of developing a sustainability report? And externally, what are the expectations of your key stakeholders in relation to this report? Uh, and, and there are a lot of good guidelines out there. Utah have done two. There are very good guidelines for universities that want to start working with their uh, SDGs, reporting on their SDGs. The GRI, Global Report Initiative, Global Report Initiative and Global Compact also has a series of uh, guidelines for corporates. So there are a lot of good stuff there. I think it's about doing some benchmarking and learning from, from others. Okay, thank you all so much. I'm really sorry. I'm going to have to cut it off. Um, I would like to firstly thank our panelists who have been really fantastic um, and really candid in sharing your experiences and provocations, which I think is, is important for all of us to acknowledge, as well as, as the real benefits of doing this kind of work. So thank you. And also thank you for multitasking and answering a lot of the questions um, as they were coming in. I also really want to thank the participants because there's been a lot of information in the chat that I haven't even managed to look at including a lot of other universities that have shared the SDG reports, which is really um, fantastic to see. Um, we're going to think about how to uh, maybe share some of that after the webinar. I don't think we'll be able to capture it in like a Zoom email, but maybe um, in, in another format. So thank you all for that. We hopefully have recorded this webinar and we will make it available if it, if it all works. Um, uh, we'll send you the link once it's done. So thank you all very much for joining us. And um, we'll look forward to further conversations in this. Thank you very much. Thank you.